Hey folks, it's your boy Yatu, and it's been a couple months since I had the opportunity to play on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, and it's about time that I come out to you guys with a review of the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller and the Xbox Series X controller. On Microsoft's side, they really thought, hey, you know what, our previous gen controls worked, everyone loved it, let's just make it a bit better with no drastic changes. Whereas on Sony's front, this is a complete opposite. We have the DualSense, which is a complete reimagination of the DualShock. And I would love and appreciate your subscribe, your like, your share, and anything you can do to help this video out as well as my channel. And yeah, it's completely free. So let's start off with the PS5 DualSense, the successor to the DualShock, which has undergone a stark redesign while keeping that control layout that PlayStation users know and love. It is probably the most next-gen looking controller, just shining with the next-gen swagger. We have great next-gen haptics and adaptive trigger resistance, which creates an opportunity for more immersive experience through tactile feedback. This is both a careful evolution and a big innovative jump from the DualSense, setting a standard for console controllers. Relative to the DualShock 4, the DualSense is beefed up and lengthier with a thicker handle, giving users a better fit in the hand simply because there is a greater surface area to grip onto. The DualSense is weighted in around 282 grams relative to the 215 gram DualShock 4, so it is considerably heavier, but with its well-balanced weight, it just falls right into your hands. If we take to the control layout, it more or less is inspired by the DualShock 4, but there are some interesting new changes to some of the buttons, as well as new features that enhance gameplay in exciting ways. The buttons and D-pad now white with gray symbols push back faster than the previous controls and have a little more travel which makes them feel less squishy and more tactile. They aren't so clicky but there is a clear sound and feeling when you fully press down on the face buttons and the D-pad. Now if we focus and take a look at the back we have the most interesting part of this control the triggers L2 and R2. They are longer, offering a deeper pull which helps to enhance experience with the precision, haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers which create resistance to stimulate tension. Now if we switch to the Series X, the new control isn't so much so next gen but an incremental update to an already trustworthy controller but that may not be a bad thing. So if we take to the controller we have a black matte finish on a plastic shell, multicolored buttons and analog sticks that feel and look similar to the previous Xbox controllers. Some of the few cosmetic changes include an all black Xbox button, a matte bumper and triggers and the changes are very subtle. The controller weighs in at 287 grams versus the Xbox One controller weighing in at 279 grams and in my personal opinion the added weight offers a feeling of quality and the controller just falls into your hands once again. Now if we take to the changes, one of the biggest one is the share button which enables users to quickly take screenshots or start recording clips with the press of a single button. The next change is an even more clickier hybrid style D-pad and the D-pad offers a very strong click and response that you can hear and feel when you press down. Once again, depending on your opinion, you may like or dislike the clickiness, but personally, I love the click provided by the buttons. Now that we looked at the functional differences between the Xbox Series X controller and the PS5 DualSense, the PS5 is a clear winner in my opinion when it comes to the functionality. It just has more to offer when it comes to a next gen experience. But now let's discuss the second most important thing when it comes to a controller and keep in mind this opinion will change from one individual to another and it is a feel of the controller and how it fits into your hands. Uh, now if you take a look at both controls, they're relatively heavier than the previous gen models, but I generally feel the Xbox just fits more into your hands in my personal opinion. Uh, so first it comes down to the grips and the controller texture, right? So now if, if I just kind of give you guys an auditory feel for it. You guys will try to understand that the material on the Series X controller is more grippier and it essentially allows your fingers and your and your palm to kind of just sit on it without moving as much. Versus, I found oftentimes when I am using the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, my hands would uh, kind of slip around, especially when I get sweaty. Uh, and yeah, so in that sense, I feel like the texture and the grip of the Xbox Series X kind of holds the control in place. But whereas one also downfall is the texture also, what that basically means is because of the matte finish, we also find that most times you do leave a lot of fingerprints on the um, Series X controller, right? Versus the PlayStation 5 DualSense. So once again, they both are very equal in terms of kind of their structure. In terms of my personal opinion, I feel like the Series X just feels better. Uh, but the functionality of the PS5 DualSense 
is far superior. So I personally think both controls are amazing in their own aspects, right? So the Series X just kept to what it does well and just made it a bit better. Whereas the PlayStation 5 took huge leap to provide us with the next gen experience. Hope you guys love this video. If you guys did, smash the like and see you guys next week. Peace out.